Morning, Alma. Pastor, could you save me a bulletin? Reminder, we are recording and mute yourself. Thank you. Good morning. Morning. Welcome to worship. It turned out to be a pretty nice day today, didn't it? <laughs> um, your feet may be a little wet, but hopefully your heads will stay dry. So that's all good. Um, happy to have our cluster congregation in the area worshiping with us. Um, it's great to have all of you here this morning. Um, just a quick reminder, because I'm afraid I'll forget later, that we do have lunch prepared for after worship. So if you're able to stay, it will just mean folks grabbing tables and setting some tables up under the tent while folks go inside and grab food and bring it out. Um, but I understand there are sandwiches and pulled pork and salads and um, some drinks and some desserts. So hopefully um, you can stay and join us for lunch and conversation as well. We are very happy to have um, Reverend Mike Benetham with us um, this morning as our preacher. As most of you know, um, Mike is the executive, I'm not going to say this right, you're a DEM, Director of Evangelical Mission. I always say it wrong, but he'll tell you that in the sermon anyway, so he'll straighten me out. But it's great to have Mike here to preach for us this morning. So um, We will give you some instruction later in the worship service regarding communion, but I will give you a heads up so you can be thinking about what will work for you 
is that we do have pre-filled juice and wine communion elements. We also have bread and wine. So you have the option. If you choose to pick, choose to use the pre-filled, you're welcome to still bring that forward for a blessing, or you may just take it back to your seat, whatever is comfortable for you. I'll remind you of that again. I'd also like to just lift up our special offering this morning, or any offerings that we gather um, are for Lutheran disaster response for the European Eastern European crisis of Ukraine to support Ukraine as well as countries surrounding them that are helping them through this crisis with supplies and all the things that they need. So that's what the offering today, and there, I'm not sure the offering to ask that too. Is it over there? It might be over there. And my, yep. okay. I thought it was silver plate, but it's over there. Okay. Did everyone find a bulletin? We all found a bulletin, good. And we're really excited to have um, some of our cluster clergy playing guitar this morning, as well as another guitarist from Trinity, Angie, welcome and Marsha Newcomer, who's the keyboard player here. And I also wanna remind you, I'm pretty sure most of, if not all of your congregations have your bulletins, things online, correct? That they could find announcements pertaining to their, your own communities. If you look at your online um, worship, because we did not put bullets, we didn't put announcements in here for every congregation. So you might wanna check that out as well. Um, clergy, anything else I should, Forgetting anything. I don't think I'm forgetting anything. And so with that, I invite you to stand um, as you are able. Um, Thanksgiving for baptism. Yeah. My voice is a little rusty. Here's on the microphone here. Hallelujah. Christ is risen. Christ, Christ is risen indeed. indeed. Hallelujah. Water, water. We praise you, O oh God, for water. The rain that nourishes animals and plants. The water for drinking and bathing. We praise you, O oh God, for water. We praise you, O oh God, for water. We praise you, O oh God, for our water stories. A flood that cleansed the earth, the sea that drowned the enemy, a river that healed leprosy. We praise you, O oh God, for water. We praise, we praise you, O oh God, for water. We remember the waters of Jesus, baptized in the Jordan River, calming the Sea of Galilee, drinking from Jacob's well, healing in the pool of Bethesda, Bethesda, whatever, <laughs> washing the disciples' feet. We praise you, O oh God, for water. We praise you, O oh God, for water. We praise you, O oh God, for this font. For through this water you have birthed us into the family of Christ, bathed us in forgiveness, and enlivened us in the Spirit. We praise you, O oh God, for baptism. We praise you, O oh God, for baptism. O oh God, you are the ocean sustaining this earth. O oh God, you are the river saving us from death. O oh God, you are the fountain granting us health and well being. We praise you, O oh God, today, tomorrow, forever. Amen and amen. Amen and amen.
of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. O Lord God, you teach us that without love, our actions gain nothing. Pour into our hearts your most excellent gift of love, that made alive by your Spirit, we may know goodness and peace. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Um, may we see you for the reading. A reading from Acts. Now the apostles and the believers who were in Judea heard that the, the Gentiles had also accepted the word of God. So when Peter went up to Jerusalem, the circumcised believers criticized him, saying, Why did you go to uncircumcised men and eat with them? Then Peter began to explain it to them step by step, saying, I was in the city of Joppa praying, and in a trance I saw a vision. There was something like a large sheet coming down from heaven, being lowered by its four corners, and it came close to me. As I looked at it closely, I saw four-footed animals, beasts of prey, reptiles, and birds of the air. I also heard a voice saying to me, get up, Peter, kill and eat. But I replied, by no means, Lord, for nothing profane or unclean has ever entered my mouth. But a second time, the voice answered from heaven, what God has made clean, you must not call profane. This happened three times. Then everything was pulled up again to heaven. At that very moment, three men sent to me from Caesarea arrived at the house where we were. The spirit told me to go with them and not to make a distinction between them and us. These six brothers also accompanied me and we entered the man's house. 
He told us how he had seen the angel standing in his house and saying, send to Joppa and bring Simon, who is called Peter. He will give you a message by which you and your entire household will be saved. And as I began to speak, the Holy Spirit fell upon them, just as it had upon us at the beginning. And I remembered the word of the Lord, how he had said, John baptized with water, but you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit. If then God gave them the same gift that he gave us when he, we believed in the Lord Jesus Christ, who was I that I could hinder God? When they heard this, they were silenced. And they praised God, saying, when God has given even to the Gentiles the repentance that leads to life. Holy wisdom, holy word. Thanks be to God. The psalm. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord from the heavens. Praise God in the heights. Praise the Lord, all your angels. Praise all your hosts Praise the Lord, sun and moon. Sing praise, all you shining stars. Praise the Lord, heaven and the heavens. Let, the Lord above the heavens. Let them praise the name of the Lord who commanded, and they were created. Who made them stand fast forever and ever, giving them all that shall not pass away. Praise the Lord from the earth, you sea monsters and all deeps. Fire and hell, snow and fog. Mountains and all hills, fruit trees and all cedars. Sovereigns of the earth and all peoples, princes and all rulers of the world. Young men and ladies, all Let them praise the name of the Lord, whose name only is exalted, whose splendor is over earth and heaven. The Holy Gospel according to John. When he, meaning Judas, had gone out, Jesus said, Now the Son of Man has been glorified, and God has been glorified in him. If God has been glorified in him, God will also glorify him in himself, and will glorify him at once. Little children, I am with you only a little longer. You will look for me, and as I said to the Jews, so now I say to you, where I am going, you cannot come. I give you a new commandment, that you love one another. Just as I have loved you, you also should love one another. By this, everyone will know that you are my disciples if you have love for one another. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Well, good morning, everyone. 
Good morning. It's a delight to be here when I was a parish pastor. My favorite church service of the whole year was always the Sunday of the picnic when we could be outside <laughs> under a pavilion in the, in the fresh air and the ever-changing elements, of course. It added a, a, an interesting, surprising challenge to the day sometimes. But uh, when Pastor Donna introduced me earlier, she forgot to mention one really important thing. And that is that I'm a member of Freedom's Church. So I'm also part of the Holy Cluster, although it's not that often I get uh, here to participate in worships. So it's, it's good to be here with you this morning. I also want to bring you greetings from our bishop, Bishop uh, Christopher DeForest, who uh, he and his wife uh, and uh, son were just on vacation this week down in Florida because that was when his parents had an opportunity to have a timeshare available. So even though the Synod Assembly is now less than four weeks away, he found a chance to get away and, and get some relaxing time. He does send you his readings and also his words of appreciation for the many different ways that you folks are partners in ministry with all the other congregations and synodically authorized worshiping communities in the Northeastern Pennsylvania Synod. Together, we're able to accomplish a, a great deal in terms of making Christ known, both in our local communities and in the larger territory of the church. And we're so grateful for your mission support partnership and the leadership that, that many of you, you folks from your congregations provide, the civic ministry teams, task forces, tables, and working groups. Now, grace to you and peace from God our Father, and from the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. If they heckle me, I want you to let me know. Okay? I, just, I don't want them to get away with anything. Well, the college student's name is Bill. Try to picture Bill. He has wild hair, wears a t-shirt, has jeans with holes in them, a couple of piercings and some tattoos, and, and wears sandals. Now, this was literally his wardrobe for his entire four years of college. Bill is brilliant, an excellent student, and he's also kind of quirky. As a child, his parents never took him to church. But after getting to know some students in the Campus Christian Fellowship Group, Bill has begun exploring the faith. Not too far from the university campus is a large formal congregation with a very well-dressed, well-mannered group of people. For years, the leaders of the congregation have wanted to develop a ministry with the college students, but no one's quite sure how to go about it. Well, one Sunday morning, Bill decides to attend worship at this traditional church. He walks into the building in his typical attire, his sandals, his jeans, his t-shirt, and of course his wild, unruly hair. The service has already started. So Bill starts down the center aisle looking for a place to sit. Now on this particular Sunday, the church is really packed, especially with folks sitting on the aisles. Bill can't find a seat. But as he ambles down the aisle, getting closer and closer to the front, the rest of the worshipers start to look uncomfortable. But no one says anything. As Bill gets closer to the first pew, he realizes there are no seats for him. So he just squats down on the carpet. Now, this is perfectly acceptable behavior at a college, campus, Christian fellowship group. But trust me, nothing like this has ever happened at that church before. By now, the worshipers are really anxious, and the tension in the air is thick. Then, from the back of the church, a longtime member slowly starts making his way toward Bill. This man is in his late 80s. He has silver gray hair and is wearing a three-piece suit. Everyone knows him to be a godly man. He's very dignified, very respectable. He walks with a cane. And as he approaches the boy, 
everyone is saying to themselves, well, you, you can't really blame him for what he's about to do. How can you expect someone of his age and his background to understand some unkempt kid sitting on the floor of our church? It takes a long time for the man to reach the boy. The church is utterly silent, except for the clicking of the man's cane. All the eyes are focused on him. You can't hear anybody breathing. The pastor can't even preach the sermon because of the tension in the air. Everyone is waiting for the man to do what they all know he has to do. Now, they see this elderly man drop his cane on the floor. And with great difficulty, he lowers himself and sits down next to Bill so that he won't have to worship alone. Everyone chokes up with emotion. And when the pastor recovers her composure, she says, what I'm about to preach, you will never remember. But what you have just seen, you will never forget. Be careful how you live. You may be the only Bible that some people read. From our gospel, Jesus said, I give you a new commandment that you love one another. Just as I have loved you, you also should love one another. Then from our first lesson. So when Peter went up to Jerusalem, the circumcised believers criticized him, saying, why did you go to uncircumcised men and eat with them? I was asked to preach at this cluster worship service because of my role as the Synod's Director for Evangelical Mission, or DEM, as Pastor Donna said. Each of the Evangelical Lutheran Church in America's 65 synods has a director for evangelical mission, an individual that's called by the national church, by the church-wide organization, to work with the congregations and the ministries in that particular synod in areas of mission planning and evangelical outreach and other things. Part of the DEM's work is to help the people and the congregations of the synod live into the ELCA's 10-year ministry goal of inviting 1 million new people into the way of Jesus so that they may discover community, justice, and love. And in particular, people who are younger and more diverse Folks, in other words, who look more like what society around us is becoming rather than what our typical congregations look like today. People like Bill, for instance. But that's a challenge for us, isn't it? It's a challenge to develop meaningful relationships with people who are different from us, different in age, different in economic class, different in race or ethnicity, different in sexual orientation or gender identity. And if we don't have those trusting relationships, how can we with any kind of integrity or effectiveness invite people to experience the grace of God as we have experienced it? Before we moved to Pennsylvania, when we were living down in Georgia and I was at Emory University, my family and I were members of a congregation that was situated in a changing neighborhood. Many of the old time residents were moving out and a new kind of demographic was moving in. I attended a congregational meeting where folks were wrestling with the decline of the congregation in light of these circumstances. I can still picture where I was sitting. I can still picture where the man was, but a man stood up near the back of the church and said, look, I don't have any problem with those people coming to this church. 
as long as they do things the way that we do them. And I thought, you know, at least the guy's honest, right? He was just expressing what many other people were thinking, but didn't have the words to say. The ELCA, Evangelical Lutheran Church in America, you might have heard, has the distinction of being the whitest denomination in the United States, a country that is moving closer and closer to being a multi-ethnic, multi-racial society. And many of our congregations skew older than the communities in which they were situated. And the ELCA is not alone. It's been observed, you might have heard, that 11 o'clock on a Sunday morning is the most segregated hour of the week. As people gather to celebrate their faith with folks who, for the most part, are just like they are, just like them in race, just like them in economic status, and so on. And the New Testament reminds us that this is in no way a new challenge for the followers of Jesus. Already in the book of Acts, we read about ethnic tensions between Jewish and Gentile believers in the multicultural world that was the, Holy, it was the Roman Empire. Already in the New Testament letters of 1 Corinthians and James, we read about tensions brought on by economic diversity as well-to-do Christians had issues mingling with their poor siblings in the faith. We do well to acknowledge these challenges and these tensions, since even in our daily lives, we are encouraged to hang out with and feel most comfortable with those who, for the most part, are just like us. But then Jesus, on the night of his last supper, after he had humbled himself and washed his disciples' feet, after Judas had left the room to do what he was going to do, Jesus says to his gathered disciples, I give you a new commandment, that you love one another. Just as I have loved you, you also should love one another. By this, everyone will know that you are my disciples, if you have love for one another. And folks, the really beautiful thing about this new commandment is that it is preceded by a promise. The promise that although Jesus' love for humanity will bring him betrayal, suffering and death. That betrayal, suffering and death are in fact the very gateway to his glorification. The cross is the precursor to his resurrection to new life. New life for Jesus, but also new life for all who follow him. As we gather here on this beautiful May morning, on the fifth Sunday of the season of Easter, we remember that the cross and the resurrection of Jesus offer us not only personal forgiveness for our sins and the promise of a new beginning with God. Communally, we recognize that Good Friday and Easter are also meant to transform our perspective. They call us to a new way of looking at the world around us. A world in which all people are our neighbors. Folks whom Jesus loves. Folks whom we can love as well. So this morning, as we celebrate this transforming love of God in Jesus Christ through word and sacrament and fellowship together, Let's ponder what Jesus' new commandment means for us. How can we, each one of us, in the context of our daily lives, in our meetings, in our greetings, wherever 
Christ will take us in this coming week. How can we make sure that we keep our hearts and our minds open to be bearers of Christ's love to all those with whom we come in contact? Amen.
Morning, we gather together not only in song and in worship, but also in prayer. Please join us in prayer. Each petition will conclude with God in your mercy. And please let us acclaim together to our prayer. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Creator, for giving us night and day, a lunar eclipse and sun feeding the new seasonal growth of crops, trees, and flowers. Please help us to recognize the beauty all around us. God, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. prayer. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Creator, for this earth and all people, the land upon which we worship. For the Len Lenape Nation, native caretakers of this holy ground, for this community stewardship united today in person and virtually. Please help us to bring support and healing to people forced to become refugees or from their land by economics, violence, and natural disasters. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Praise the Lord, Holy Spirit. Thank you for joy and energy, for little children and the young at heart. Thank you for play and picnics, for education and educators, for graduations, for all anticipating, all anticipating weddings, births, new beginnings, for summer vacations, for all preparing to leave summer programs at Bear Creek Camp, vacation Bible schools, synod and church-wide assemblies. God, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Praise the Lord, all monarchs and leaders of the earth and all peoples of diverse genders and ages. We thank you, God, for giving us free will and autonomy. Please guide us to actively participate in the election process this week and guide all who are candidates and elected leaders to govern wisely for the good of all, loving one another. God, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Praise the Lord. Savior, we thank you for living among us, for enduring infirmity. Please be with all those, including we name out loud and in our hearts at this time. Please be with those names spoken and unspoken, with individuals undergoing tests and treatments. Please be with those with chronic illnesses and dis-ease. Be with those enduring unknowns and silent scars. Gentle healer Jesus, please bring comfort and resolve to all grieving, including the people of the United Arab Emirates mourning their leader, families in Buffalo, Dallas, and Milwaukee, joining communities near and far and mourning victims and shooting. Please be with the congregations of Spangsville, Spies, Boyertown, and others who've recently buried loved ones, including saints who are able to live long, faithful lives and are now resting in your heavenly peace. God, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Holy Spirit, through baptism and inspiration as you make all things new, help us as your body in the world today to be church, to be trustworthy and true. Give us opportunity and passion to give to the thirsty your water as a gift from the spring of the water of life. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, we pray. Amen. Amen. Right, you may be seated. Just a few reminders again about communion. And you will come up on either side of the tables in the center aisle. 
There are pre-filled wine and pre-filled juice, as well as just the empty cups that you may bring, or you may come forward to receive bread and wine. We have both options. Um, you're welcome to bring the pre-filled up for um, a blessing, or you may take it back to your seat and um, have some silent prayer before you take communion. And just a reminder about the offering today that it is for um, return disaster response in response to the crisis in Eastern Europe. And you may have noticed a QR code in your, in your bulletin. For those of you that are tech savvy, mm -hmm. that code is to, for an offering that goes directly to Lutheran disaster response. That code, if you scan that or your offering, that's where it will go. So I invite you as you're able to join me in our offertory prayer and then we will share the peace and proceed with communion. Living God, we gather the wolf and the lamb to feed together in your peaceful way. And you welcome us all at your table. Reach out to us through this meal. Show us your wounded and risen body that we may be nourished and believe in Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you. And also with you. Bless you. Let us pray. It is indeed right and salutary that we should at all times and in all places offer thanks and praise to you, O Lord, Holy Father, almighty and ever-living God. But chiefly we are bound to praise you for the, for the glorious resurrection of our Lord, for he is the true Passover lamb who gave himself to take away our sins and who by his death has destroyed death, and by his rising has brought us to eternal life. Holy, mighty, and merciful Lord, heaven and earth are full of your glory. In great love you sent to us your son, Jesus, who reached out to heal the sick and the suffering, who preached good news to the poor, and who on the cross opened his arms to all. In the night in which he was betrayed, took bread, he gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat, this is my body given for you, this is me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, he gave thanks, he gave it to all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people, for the forgiveness of sin. This for the remembrance of me. Remembering, therefore, his death, resurrection, and ascension, we await his coming in glory. Amen. Please join me in praying together the prayer Jesus taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Let your kingdom come, your will be done. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. Through the kingdom and the power and the glory. Now and forever. Amen.
Let us pray. We give you thanks, generous God, for in this bread and cup we have been we have tasted the new heaven and earth, where hunger and thirst are no more. Send us from this table as witnesses to the resurrection, that through our lives all may know life in Jesus' name. Amen. Please rise. God, the author, God, the author of life. Christ, the living cornerstone, and the life-giving spirit of adoption, bless you now and forevermore. Amen.
um, if you're going to stay for lunch, grab some chairs and we're going to start setting up some tables. Thank mm -hmm. you.